We are back with the source. Is Canada at risk to see extremism and increased violence the longer that this pandemic continues? We go to Brock University's Centre of Canadian Studies to answer that question and welcome Ibrahim Barada. Welcome to the program, Ibrahim. Thanks for having me. This report came out from the Department of Research and Development uh, uh, from Defence and it really raises some alarming I guess possibilities the longer this pandemic goes on. We saw what happened in the United States when the capital was stormed. Are we at risk of seeing something like that happening here in Canada? Now, I'm not going to uh, po push forth this idea of fear mongering in a sense, but uh, there is an element here that we need to be wary of the the rise of populism and the rise of misinformation as well uh, as long as the, the the pandemic is is going on and as long as these uh, restrictions are going on uh canadians are obviously frustrated uh and it makes sense uh that we have these restrictions for public health and for 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 essentially uh the safety of canadians uh, but at the same time, the report identifies that there is uh, some issues that will emerge uh, if, if the pandemic is prolonged. And these are, for instance, uh, distrust in government, uh, the rise of support, of populist support, uh, and effectively the propagation of violent e extremist organizations. We saw that locally, that distrust of government, when a small group of people gathered without masks outside of St. Catherine's City Hall and stood there demanding the arrest of St. Catherine's Mayor Walter Senzek. It's kind of surprising for most of us to see that happen right here in our own neighborhoods. Right. So this, the ideologies have been going on in Canada for a very long time, right? There is just an intensification of these ideologies because of the restrictions and because of, uh, uh, of the way things are today. And so uh, it, it kind of shows that it, it kind of shows that people need to be wary and, and the government needs to be wary. And this is why the defense report was, 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 was uh, published that, that the government needs to be wary of the issues surrounding, you know, the frustration of Canadians in this case. Uh, we do see that, uh, for instance, uh, 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 the, the rise of anti-vaxxer movements and the rise of uh, anti-masker movements, right, and, and pushing back against uh, uh, the, 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 the rules and the procedures that are established uh, for our public safety and our public health. And this is something that, uh, that is, is pushed forth by the misinformation and the distrust in government, right? And this is also pushed forth by conspiracy theories that, you know, do not have any shred of evidence or credibility whatsoever. Uh, and, and the impetus, the, the push, the, the reasons behind, the raison d'etre of, of conspiracy theories is to, you know, sow in this distrust in the procedures, the government, the official, uh, uh, the, the, the attempt to, you know, push back against the violence virus itself. Ibrahim, social media allows this to propagate much more quickly. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, this is this is an issue that we have. We've we've seen this in the United States with the parlor. Uh, we've seen this, you know, uh, parlor is not necessarily just a United States social media app, um, but we've seen this uh, being pushed by QAnon uh, 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 conspiracy theorists, and and we've seen this, you know, uh, on, propagated online. And it's something that we really need to uh, be aware of. And this is an interagency effort. This is something that you know uh, government officials need to be aware of uh, that you know defense uh, intelligence as as published in the report need to be aware of and and uh, the public health officials in this case as well they need to be aware of this and this is uh, something that you know uh, it, it, Canadians need to be wary of where they retrieve and get their information, right? If they're just reading it off of, you know, someone's Facebook post, are they going to take the time to, you know, verify that information? Or is it coming from a credible source? Uh, and the, the issue, you know, it's a million dollar question. How do we fix this issue? Uh, uh, it's something that a lot of people are considering today, but you know, this is a conversation that needs to, be, to take place with these social media giants, right? With the people that you know, you know, uh, that allow for this information to go forth without necessarily having the checks and balances that we need. 
You mentioned, or at least the report mentions, I should say, that it's up to our elected officials and other public officials to really make sure that good information gets out there. One thing that struck me was the sight of Canadian flags at the storming of the American capital, and also the news that some nurses, I, th I believe a nurse from the London area was there for an anti-mask rally. Is she to be held liable for attending something like that, propagating an, an idea that it really goes against the organization for whom she works? Well, see, this is, this is something that we need to consider, is that these, these sentiments, uh, you know, they travel like wildfire. Uh, the border is not a hard border in the virtual world, right? Uh, and, and we need to realize that what happens in the United States is very much going to have a ripple effect in Canada, including the information that is, is propagated. Uh, and, and, you know, for instance, Donald Trump's uh, tendencies and, and political strategies have been employed by politicians in Canada and around the world, really. Uh, and, and, you know, the rhetoric that's been, you know, espoused by Donald Trump has been employed here. Uh, and so this is something that we definitely need to consider uh, when we're, you know, uh, trying to tackle the issue of misinformation uh, and, 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 and this propag the propaganda, essentially, uh, of, of, uh, of these fringe party movements and these fringe movements, uh, per se. And, you know, and Canadians have been swayed by it, right? There has been, there is a level of support for these uh, 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 for the sentiments that's been, you know, uh, espoused by Donald Trump and by some of these fringe, uh, fringe movements. Ibrahim, thank you for joining us today and shedding some light on this topic. Thanks for having me.